This book is based on the archives of the Secret Intelligence Service. This is the holy grail of British archives. No part of the archives has been released to the uh, National Archives, uh, to the public view, nor, I believe, are there any plans to release this. So it's like a historian's dream come true. What are the revelations in the book? Well, where do I start? The book is full of revelations. The book itself is a revelation. This is the first book written from the archives by a professional historian trying to tell the truth of the service, of its organisation, of its relations with government. And then there are the individual stories of individual people, brave men and women, doing all sorts of brave stuff. They say that one of the models for James Bond was a man called Biffy Dunderdale an almost inconceivably glamorous character who was head of station before the Second World War in Paris, Dry, drove fast cars, uh, squired pretty women about the place. And we know for a fact that Ian Fleming knew Biffy Dunderdale. And Biffy Dunderdale claimed, these claims are easily made, long afterwards, that he kept seeing elements of stories he had told Fleming in the Ian Fleming books. Unfortunately, he didn't give precise details so we all have to search for them as best we can. And then there's Kim Philby. Now the service doesn't much like Kim Philby, and with reason. He is the service's greatest traitor, reporting to Moscow from almost the beginning through the Second World War into the Cold War period, jeopardizing operations, betraying fellow officers, betraying the trust that was uh, invested in him. But a brilliant, an adept officer, good at his job, really good at his job, or both his jobs. And when you come across a document generated by Philby, signed by Philby, there is a particular resonance to it. There's a wonderful story about uh, another officer who's a left winger, um, I, I, he doesn't hide it, uh, and he wants to leave the service at the end of the war. And there's a bit of suspicion that he might be a Soviet agent. We better check up on this guy. And it goes to Philby, who is in part of the security section ha -ha, um, of, the, of the service at the time. And Philby looks at this man and he says, well, he has pretty bad friends, uh, poor choice of friends, this fellow. Uh, but he wants to leave the service. And I can categorically say he isn't a Soviet agent. Because if he were a Soviet agent, because he had a job in the service, the Soviets wouldn't let him leave. Well, Philby would know. And who's the most interesting new figure in the book? Well, I think it's probably Agent Ecclesiastic. Because we can't name agents, I can't tell you very much about her. But she worked in Lisbon during the war, and she was run by a man called Klopp Ustinov, the actor Peter Ustinov's father. And Klopp Ustinov was a flirtatious fellow, and his case officer reports on Ecclesiastic are a model of um, the stylish, um, male view of this classic female agent. Her womanly charms work to her advantage. She knows very well um, what they are and she rather enjoys deploying them, he said. Obviously he fancied her. Uh, yet this is an agent who supplied disinformation valuably to the German intelligence people in, in, in Lisbon. Uh, and she comes out of the, uh, uh, leaps out of the pages as a real kind of person. And there's a picture of her too, and we have that in the book. The only reason we have it is that her German uh, lover took photographs of her, taking photographs of British documents she had stolen from the office she worked in, which was a, an air liaison office in Lisbon. And he took these photographs as insurance. He said to her, I've taken these photographs. If you shot me, if you betray me, I have these as evidence, and this is evidence that you're a spy. And the only reason we have them is she gave them straight back to her British case officer, to Klopp Ustinov, saying, this is the insurance you have that I'm on your side and not theirs. This is the single most important book on the secret intelligence service ever. In 10 years time, and in 20 years' time, it will, I hope, remain so and be a benchmark against which all other studies, all other works on the SIS will be measured. At least that's my intention. But you're going to have to buy the book and read it too, I hope, and make up your own mind about that.